what's the big plan? And I know one thing is ammunition is being, has been bought off the shelves like never before in United States history. We have never had these many guns in our country than ever before in the United States history. And don't think there's just certain one group of people or that group of people that they're the only ones that have weapons. Everybody's got them. Tight. Gun stores. You can't find any, any ammunition. So I like to joke and say, well, what's going on? We're getting gearing up for war? And you'll be amazed at some of the uh, responses I've gotten about that. And if we've ever crossed paths and became friends, for me, you'll always a friend. How do you see it? I've been asked quite often, uh, there are people that know my political interests uh, in which in 2022 in the state of Oklahoma, the state Senate seat currently occupied by Frank Simpson, Senator Frank Simpson, uh, which he's in his final term and it will be vacant. And many that know me in this area uh, knew that I had political aspirations for years now. And these principles, these laws, that we all must, how we are governed as Americans. Yes, we're all Americans. It doesn't matter your race. We're all Americans. We were born on this soil. Hi, this is Robert Wilkins, AKA Basketball Tall. Welcome to my channel. Today is gonna to be a little different from my normal programming. Uh, I'm gonna go off script a little bit today. Uh, I'm currently in a creator's fast track workshop online and uh, I'm getting away from my niche at least today because I've been asked quite often uh, there are people that know my political interests uh, in which in 2022 in the state of Oklahoma the state Senate seat currently occupied by Frank Simpson Senator Frank Simpson uh, which he's in his final term and it will be vacant. And many that know me in this area uh, knew that I had political aspirations for years now. And I've been out of retirement since the end of 2019. And you know, a lot of things change in such uh, a short time. You know, a few years go by, a lot of things change. But I am going to talk about it somewhat today, so stay tuned. When I first started this channel, I hope that I lived up to the commitment. Uh, May 11th was one year of uh, being a content creator. And I like to think that I honored my goal. I said to you uh, in my first video, it's time to win. That was the first video that I posted as a content creator. And I told you that I was gonna bring you all those superstars all around America that provide some wisdom, some knowledge that can help us in our pursuit of whatever our careers or dreams may be. And I think I delivered. If you think that I delivered, please comment about that as well in the comment section below. Because I brought to you some superstars from around this country that provided some great information, some gold nuggets that we can all live by. And if we adhere to a lot of the things that were shared and said, can't help but propel us to the next level, whatever that may be for you. If we've ever crossed paths and became friends, for me, you'll always a friend. How do you see it? Is a friend just someone you just meet for a moment and then you brush off? No. For me, I don't care if I met you 20, 30 years ago. You're still a friend. Unless something that was so horrific that destroyed that relationship. But otherwise, if I hadn't seen you in 30 years and I see you to, the, to this day, and many of you probably have encountered me on this journey, I still look at you as a friend. Shouldn't we all be like that? If we're not, why? What has changed? What caused that to sever that relationship. For those of you that have followed me on this channel, you know that I was involved in law enforcement. 
So therefore, I have guns. And I like to go target practice every now and then. And I've been trying for the last several months to buy some ammunition. What's going on here? You can't even buy bullets. <laughs> I mean, it's gotten that bad. You know, I, uh, I like to joke when I go to these stores that sell weapons and ammunition. And when they tell me, hey, we, we don't have any, we're out. Uh, time we get a shipment in, you know, people, the line is so long and people are standing out before we can get on the shelves good and get, you know, and, and sell them. You know, you can go to Academy Sports everywhere, all over these gun places, even these small kind of like private mom and pop type gun stores. You can't find any, any ammunition. So I like to joke and say, well, what's going on? We're getting gearing up for war? And you'll be amazed at some of the uh, responses I've gotten about that. And it's like there is something going on. And I think as we take a look at what's been going on in the country, you know, lately, uh, why would that be? Why, you, you know, you can't even buy ammunition right now because it's just flying off the shelves. What's going on? Truly, really, what's going on? Uh, so many of you out there blind and have no idea this is happening. And I've been trying for months just to get me some. Now, of course, I do have a lot of, I have ammunition, but I have certain little weapons I like to practice on that, you know, I'm very low on, just about out, and I'm trying to get some ammunition, and I can't seem to find any, no matter where I go. Even if I'm out of state, I go to different places, I can't find any ammunition because people are buying it up. Could January the 6th or maybe the last few years has triggered this behavior in our country? I remember in the 1970s when I graduated in 1976 out of high school, uh, the 1970s was a great transformation of integration really because now you know you found that Many African Americans and other races started going to other schools that was once banned for them. And I was in the midst of that. I was talking to a good friend of mine one day, and I was watching 30 for 30 on ESPN. And, you know, and they had Bob Love, who played for Southern University. And they were talking about, you know, the 1970s was the great migration of the black athlete. The 1970s. So I was part of that great migration. So integration, the great experiment in this country came about in the, the mass migration in the 1970s. And America transformed. We went in a direction because of the integration that we're not going back. How can we? A whole new breed have developed through this process. And I did a program one of my shows recently uh, talked about in 2018, there were 14 million biracial new births. Now, some folks don't, may not want to hear that, but let's look at America here. We have some of every race in the world here in this country. And the Constitution, you know, slavery and everything else, how it all came about. I like to think God had a hand in all of that how things evolved, and how we all live by the Constitution. I'm a Constitution guy. I obey city, federal, and state laws. I obey the Constitution. I try my very best to try and do the right thing. And there are so many other millions of people just like me. We are Constitutionists, okay? We believe in our democracy. And no matter what, no one's going to change that because we are what we are. We was, however it came about, it has evolved into what we are today. And what a testimony it would be for the world to see. This great experiment that we've been in among the races like nowhere else in this world that people have been looking at the United States as a place if I could get to America, I can live my dreams. If I could get to America, I could be free. If I can just get to America, going across oceans, deserts, dying, literally trying to get here. 
And here we are, uh, have lived a level of peace among the races like never before in the existence of the world. And all of a sudden now, ammunition being bought up like never before. We can't afford to have whatever the plan may be from the minority in this country. And because it's a losing cause, everybody's got guns, everybody. You know, no matter what race you are, everybody's got guns. So you can see it'll be a losing cause for America and we will become a third world country. Is that what you want? Truly, is that what you want? This country was built, really, on guns from the Wild West. And, but as I said, now it has evolved into what God meant for it to be. I truly believe when the founding fathers, when they wrote the Constitution, uh, it was God led. They couldn't see what was going to be in the future to come. But God did. And many will say that this country was founded on Christianity. And I consider myself a Christian. How about you? How many people are blinded by what they see in you? Is Christ being shown in you? Why? Why not? Are we following evil? Are we following deceit? Are we following hatred? Are we following lies? If we are, think about what we're doing. Think about what you're doing. Where is it going to lead? What's the big plan? And I know one thing is ammunition is being, has been bought off the shelves like never before in United States history. We have never had these many guns in our country than ever before in the United States history. And don't think it's just certain one group of people or that group of people that they're the only ones that have weapons. Everybody's got them. I'm a, I'm a guy. I have weapons, okay? And I know how to handle my weapons. But no one wants to talk about that. If you're a Christian, we need to seek peace. We need to be more understanding. We need to stop going off the far right or the far left. And since I've been considering jumping into the political arena for years now, I'll just tell you, I'm an independent. I am not bought or owned by anyone. I'm all about the people. I'm all about doing the right thing for you. Not what one party says I should do or should not do, but what I know to do for the people, and that is doing what's right. Righteousness rule. Justice shall prevail. Because that's what this country was founded on. These principles, these laws, that we all must, how we are governed as Americans. Yes, we're all Americans. It doesn't matter your race. We're all Americans. We were born on this soil. And for the vast majority of us, we're going to die on this soil. So I think it's time that we need to look at peace. How can we tell another country to do something when we have conflict and issues right in our own land? Now let's talk politics just for a moment. Many of you know my uh, political affiliation. Many of you know my aspirations. Now, my reason for jumping into politics was being a government public servant. I often saw things that I felt that if I ran, I could make the difference and bring about a positive change. And I'm talking about a positive change and certain things that I saw dealing with kids. And I felt that the state law could change to make things better and more efficiently. As far as through, you know, law enforcement, the court, including the treatment aspects of it. So that was my 
basis for wanting to run because I really felt I could make a difference. Now, I live in an area, you know, that's, we say, basically Republican base. It was deep red. I, uh, I was, had a conversation with someone one day and I was telling them, hey, where I live is different from down there where you live. And you have a lot of people from around the country in certain sections of this, of this, uh, these United States have never ventured out in certain regions of the country and realized life is different from where you are. I know in Louisiana, where I grew up at, large black population, and we look all through the deep south, uh, for the states itself, you're looking anywhere from 30 to about 40 percent or whatever, you know, that make up African Americans. And then when you come to a state which I'm currently in, in the whole state itself, it's only 7% African Americans. I felt very confident prior to the last couple of years that I have a great chance of winning because I have I made a lot of relationships. I have a lot of friends. And, and I don't take that lightly. Once, I'm, once you're a friend of mine, you're a friend of mine for life. And I treat you as such. And, but based on what's been going on today, you know, I've, I've been really thinking about this. You know, the Senate seat for the state is going to be wide open. I'm sure there's going to be quite a few challengers out there. But then again, based on the hatred, the division, the things that's been going on in our country like never before, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to have my family subjected to this. Then again, someone else has told me, this is the time we need you to run. But it's more than just about myself. So I just want to tell you, stay tuned and we'll see where this goes because I still have some time here. But if you think I should run, let me hear you. Get, let me hear your comments. Comment below. And whatever, how you feel, I like to hear that too. Because hate is ruling our country today. And it shouldn't be. Because the majority of people here in this United, these United States consider themselves Christian. And if that's the case, why aren't we acting like it? Why aren't we showing love for one another? Why aren't we, why, why are we doing this over basically politics? But I probably more than anything, skin tone. If you're my friend, you're my friend for life. And I would like to say that I hope that we can all see what's going on and get back on track to where we need to be. Because we were experiencing a level of degree of peace like we have never experienced before in these United States. We are continually making history and we still need to be that beacon where all the world can see because I love this country, just as you love this country. And everyone that lives in this country and born on this soil love this country. Nobody's going anywhere. Despite everything that's going on right now, God will prevail. Because God's behind all of this. And then again, God might decide, I've had enough. It might be that, like Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? And then again, we're right right now for the returning of Jesus. Well, all of a sudden we hear this loud trumpet sound and we all of a sudden see someone descending from the clouds. Are you ready? Seriously, seriously, are you ready? Are you ready to meet your maker? Are you ready for judgment? I wish I can say, let's all stop with the buying up of ammunition. Let's all get back if you consider yourself a Christian and not a hypocrite. You know, let's start showing it, let's live by it. And I think if we do, this, everyone, will be right back where we were prior to all of this. That shining beacon upon a hill that everybody wants to get to. And that's the greatest country ever existed in human history. These United States of America. God bless you. Please pray for me. 
because we all need prayer right now. Because prayer does change things. Wouldn't you agree? Amen.